Uh, welcome. Uh, listen, Ed, I just wanted your opinion. Alex is with us this morning. Allies of Boris Johnson, including Nadine Doris, uh, Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg, have been heavily criticised, as you know, yesterday for putting improper pressure on the Commons investigation in whether he lied uh, to MPs over Partygate. Seven MPs, three peers, not you, I'm delighted to say, were named in that special report on sustained interference. This has created, I mean, it, what was it? Uh, unprecedented and coordinated pressure. There has been massive kickback on this. Um, I, I'll keep my opinions to myself um, and let your lordship speak first, as one should. Views, please, Edward? Well, I don't want to rule out a return to the Cabinet, but I do think that the Privileges Committee... or well, not a return, because I've obviously never been in the Cabinet. Uh, but I think the Privileges Committee is having a bit of a hissy fit. They cite this uh, document, Erskine May, which is the rule book of Parliament, uh, which talks about how you can be in contempt of Parliament if you, if you interfere in the procedures of Parliament. But it's so broad-ranging, it might as well apply to, you know, the way the Daily Mail depicted the Brexit debates when we were in the thick of it after the referendum in 2016. Uh, it basically, you, you could take what Erskine May says and say any criticism of any parliamentary institution is a contempt of parliament. And you can't live in a free society like that. And I think this is the cut and thrust of politics and MPs, even though I'm not particularly uh, sympathetic to the Jacob rees mogs of this world, are free to criticise um, this parliamentary process. They backed Boris Johnson. They thought he was being hung out to dry and they expressed their view on that basis. It didn't stop the committee reaching its conclusion. It didn't stop Parliament voting for what the committee concluded. Uh, so I do think it's a pretty unprecedented uh, report and I think it's fairly flimsy. I mean, Alex, that's that's your view as well, isn't it? In, in, in having Ed's view, it's not... It's not that... I'm not sticking up for Boris Johnson. I repeat what I said at 6.30. You're condoning anything that went on in number 10, and I'm not sitting here and saying he got an 80-seat majority and he was removed. What I'm saying is fundamentally this. It smacks to me, that phrase kangaroo court that Harpoon didn't like and a, and a cluster of weirdos that made up the committee, that's my language, not yours. I, I would ask you this, Ed, that I asked Alex earlier. Can you imagine if Boris Johnson and his band of apparently little people who ran around and were unfair, can you imagine if one of them had tweeted before that committee had started, we're going to bring down Harriet Harman? The fact of the matter is, whether it's Harriet Harman tweeting, whether it's, uh, what is he, what was it, Bernard Jenkin, the Tory grandee, having that party and basically, I, I think, being hoisted by his own petard. To me, it smacked of the establishment, a, a bit like Trump, but, but not, never wanted Johnson, never wanted to leave the European Union, and apart from getting rid of him, are just going to try and stick the knife into anybody that's associated with Boris Johnson. And whatever your political persuasion, that's not a good look. I think a lot of people out there see this as a continuation of those really ugly scenes, which I think are a stain on our democracy, that happened in the aftermath of the referendum. And it's funny, isn't it? This Privileges Committee saying, don't criticise us, don't say anything out of turn about the way the Parliament works. And yet when Boris Johnson was trying to get the Brexit deal through and Parliament were acting like a load of feral monsters and actually trying to go against the will of the people, there was all sorts of criticism being thrown about, about proroguing Parliament, about this, about that, about we demand sovereignty, we demand this, we demand that. You know, the people have decided but there are you know mechanisms we have to go through to make this all lawful then all of a sudden when they're using their mechanisms and people think well we don't like the mechanisms oh don't don't criticize don't say anything and i think a lot of people out there see this for what i see it as which is essentially something happened in 2016 where a huge chunk of people turned around and they said we do not like the way this government's running we don't feel like we're being prioritized in the grand scheme of things and we want to see change not tinkering about not messing around at the edges actual wholesale change and Which parliament turned happened. around the, the establishment turned around and said you're not going to get it we're not going to listen you're wrong you're stupid you're thick you've been lied to and i think a lot of people see what's going on right now uh, when it comes to the pretty zealous uh, punishment of boris johnson and then almost now this way that anyone who backs him has to be removed from front benches has to be silenced accused of bullying it, i mean it can it be a coincidence that you've got nigel farage having bank accounts shut down you've got dominic Rock 
got well, removed for bullying. You've got Pretty Patel being told she's a bully as well. You've got Rishi Sunak in power, who is at the same party as Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson suspended for 90 days and then essentially booted out. I mean, is it just that everybody who backed leave is a, a cretin, is an awful person, or is there some sort of concerted uh, effort to get rid of them? Ed, I really, I really would love your response, and this isn't a light-hearted comment. The 90-day punishment meted out to Boris Johnson is the worst ever bar Keith Vaz, who, what's your great line about him? He, he was going after gigolos and drugs, wasn't he? I mean, that's, that's pretty bad. He didn't just eat cake. Do you think, <laughs> do you think that it is, uh, this reaction is exactly what Alex says, which is an establishment that will never forgive Boris Johnson or anybody associated with him for leave for 2016 because they're unprecedented and this continuance is beginning to, to really annoy people. You'd understand that, right? No, I think that's a complete and utter nonsense and a total red herring. I mean, one of the lead members of that committee was Bernard Jenkin, who was uh, at the forefront of the referendum campaign, campaigning for Brexit, the campaign for Brexit for 20 or 30 years since he uh, entered Parliament. So the idea that it's uh, sort of a stitch-up to get the Brexiteers is completely absurd. What it is is that I think they've been overzealous, this committee. I think the 90 days punishment was excessive. I mean, I defended Boris Johnson over Partygate because I thought that if people were working together in Downing Street, it didn't matter that they had a glass of wine in their hand. The, the, the kind of red line had been crossed in terms of people working together, whether or not that increased the risk of spreading the virus or not. And as I say, I think their reaction to being criticised by backbench MPs, I mean, I think our political discourse has gone down the toilet and it's, uh, it's not something I would have particularly wanted MPs to do to to describe the Privileged Committee as a kangaroo court, but that is their right in a democracy uh, with that's values. That's what I want to hear, speak. absolutely. That, that's, the, that's the problem, because it ends up looking like uh, we can criticise anybody before, during or after. We're allowed to make our judgement. I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is you can't have it one way. You have to have it both ways, don't you? Isn't that the point? If you're going to criticise people, you have to be able to take it back. That's the same rule in Absolutely. any Absolutely, and this, is a, this, is a, this isn't a the judiciary. The judiciary we, we're free to criticise people decisions made by judges you know if they let, let out prisoners and murderers and so on we're quite free to come on this program and say the judges made a terrible decision and not expect to be locked up for contempt of court this is a political committee chris bryant who was the chairman see i respected down. him i said last night he said i'm anti boris johnson i'm stepping aside complete respect for chris bryant in that exactly instance. so he tweeted away about uh, his uh, and, and he took the view that his tweets meant that uh, his judgment had been compromised or the perception of his judgment had been compromised. Harriet Harman chose not to do that, despite the fact that she tweeted about Boris Johnson. And if she's free to criticise Boris Johnson on Twitter before she makes a decision, other people are free to criticise this committee. I'm not like you, Jeremy. I'm not giving a view on whether or not the no. committee made the right decision or not. I'm not giving a view about how it conducted this inquiry. I'm giving a view that it should be slightly less uh, prissy about how people have taken pot shots at it, given that members of that committee have been free to take pot shots at their political opponents uh, before they came to sit on this committee and uh, bring a judgment. Completely agree with you. Um, the other thing that everybody's talking about, and I'm really interested in your response to this on a serious note, yesterday, the Court of Appeal, Rwanda's not, it's unlawful, the government say that's what we as a democratically elected government want to do, we're going to go to the, the Supreme Court. Whatever your view about, you know, whether we should be humanitarian, which you were urging Ukraine, or we should turn the boats back, or blah, 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 blah. It is another example, is it not, Ed, that the politics in this country is, is, is dropping in terms of people and their thoughts about it on a daily basis. I mean, if a democratically elected government, again, whether you disagree with that policy or not, has to work out that it needs three unelected judges to tell us we can't have one. It doesn't make any sense to me, mate. People are getting more and more and more angry about this immigration problem. Well, look, I mean, there are two points there. One is, is the random policy the right policy? I don't know. I've never... Uh, been against the Rwanda policy. I think we need to look at radical solutions to deal with the boats and to deal with like curing uh, our processing system, system mate, like, like an sorting it system out. That is uh, completely broken. Yeah. Other people have different ideas. Labour say they've put more money into crime prevention and more money into processing asylum seekers, but there are other views. But I do support the judges in being able to make decisions about what Parliament decides. We live in a constitutional democracy. We live in a country where the rule of law is sacrosanct, and I think all of us as politicians have to respect the fact 
that judges make decisions. Jackie Smith, the former Home Secretary, was tweeting this morning that she was frustrated when she was Home Secretary. She had, she had many of her decisions about deporting foreign criminals overturned by the courts. She didn't call for the courts to be dismantled. I thought it was disgraceful when we attacked the judges during Brexit. I lost the whip by defending Parliament and its right to make a decision about what kind of Brexit we had when Boris wanted to prorogue us. I supported the courts uh, when they decided that prorogation was wrong, but there are other court decisions that I've disagreed with. But I, support, I absolutely defend the right, uh, or rather I defend the constitution of our country, which gives judges the right, no one is above the law, and gives judges uh, the constitutional role of reviewing decisions. People can bring cases to court if they are concerned about how a government has reached a decision. That stops autocracy. It stops the uh, a majority government using its power to pass through laws that are unconstitutional. And I think that's absolutely right and proper, and we should defend it. Alex? Yeah, now I've got a, I've got a question for Ed, actually, which is, um, given that situation, I said when, when this headline was first announced about sending migrants to Rwanda that I didn't think a plane would take off. I just said, this is going to be blocked legally. Surely, if I thought that, and I'm no mystic Meg, surely anybody with half a brain in politics would have foreseen what was going to, to, to play out. Surely the Conservatives knew they were setting up a straw man and that a flight wasn't going to take off and they would waste years years and years and millions of taxpayers' money on legal battles. Well, we're members of the European Convention of Human Rights, which does give rights to people who are seeking uh, asylum. And I think it's important that we remain members of the European Convention of Human Rights. But it's a challenge to the government to get its policy right. As I say, I don't oppose the principle of the policy. It's important to get the detail uh, right. But I agree with Alex that there is a huge amount of frustration. There's been frustration with the amount of judicial review cases have been brought for many, many years. Even Michael Howard, when he was Home Secretary, and that's way back in the mid-1990s, uh, used to express his concern about that. But I think the fundamental principle that the courts can review decisions made by government is really important. Um, can I just say, it is always a pleasure. You'll no doubt be on JK Live next week, and this time next week is my birthday. Will you be on the show for my birthday? I'm coming on your show on Monday, but I am going away this weekend. I'm going to get you a special present. Are you? I don't think we should talk about that on air. Uh, Lord Ed Vasey, <laughs> if I'd been Prime Minister, you'd have been definitely Minister of... You know, you'd have been a Cabinet Minister. Thank Fiddly you. Have a, I'll see you Monday. Thanks for that.